now, so when one goes already. Now, that's what the code book says, okay? We've covered the code book. You go, well, there seems to, what's missing here? Well, all good code books say, hey, do it per the code and per NFPA 72, and oh, by the way, per manufacturer's installation instructions. <clears throat> I put up on the screen here, lots of manufacturers. Um, I don't, what we're about to go through, I just got from their site and going to share with you one particular manufacturer, but they're all generally the same because they're all guided by NFPA 72. So I'm not endorsing any of these. I'm just saying, hey, here's the manufacturers. They're all basically the same, but read the ones that apply to your project. I'm not specking it. I'm just telling you what you might see. So I'm going to use this type, but I'm just showing you, hey, nowadays, you look for, again, they're, inter they're wired. They're hardwired into the house. And if you look at some of these, look, they say it's 10 years. It's got a 10-year backup battery in these things. So you're not replacing that 9-volt battery, for the most part, on a lot of these. Now, some of the models do have the 9-volt battery that needs replacing every year. So you just got to know what you're buying. So, But look for these things and just know that the modern smoke detector, shoot, if you read all, they talk to you, they'll say fire, or they'll say carbon monoxide, um, but they say certain things. Uh, so just look at the, the brand, the model, and the features that it has, and uh, some are really cool. Um, lots of stuff going on out there in the, in the world. And here's a sample of the carbon monoxide and smoke alarms that they sell. They look, you know, they look just the same, but the insides are gonna be a little different. So. This is what's out there. So look for the combinations if you have them. Now, when you get the box, save one of them. Save one. You, you might have 10 of these things in a house. Save the box for one with the instructions in it and actually read it. Just read the instructions once and then you'll come to find out, one, most manufacturers are very similar in their requirements. But I'm going to show you some things. It's not really in the code. It's kind of in NFPA 72, but we're also going to see them. They're applied in the manufacturer's installation instructions. And it starts off generally with not lots of words, but they also put lots of little diagrams in here. And I'll get into these diagrams that you can't see here real quick. So KIDA is one of the ones that I'm going to be using. Again, I'm not suggesting you have to use them, but they're just a good brand. And it says, hey, it kind of talks about the code. It says, hey, these things go in sleeping areas. And that's kind of what the code book says. If more than one sleeping area exists, you need them and all those things. Locate additional alarms in the stairway. So there's our second floor kind of deal or basement kind of deal. Uh, one on every level. So they're repeating what's in the code in their installation instructions. But then we get a little more specific. They talk about in the bedrooms um, where you have electrical things operating. Smoke and heat combustion products rise to the ceiling, mounting the smoke on the ceiling in the centers where you want them. Now, I'm going to get to that in a little bit. Think about that. But that's the best case. But this is, I'm just printing here on the screen what was in this installation manual. When, now, this is kind of important. I've seen this written up on inspections because it says, when mounting an alarm on the ceiling, located at least four inches from the side wall. You can't jam these things right up into the corner of the wall and the ceiling. You've got to have at least four inches away from the wall. Because why? Because that's what they say. Then it goes on, when mounting the alarm on the wall, inside wall, use an inside wall, never an outside wall where the insulation is, the top edge of the alarm shall be at least four inches below the ceiling and not more than 12 inches below the ceiling. So you've got a range from four inches down from the ceiling to 12. That's it. Within that range from the ceiling, that's where you have to have that smoke alarm. So pretty, very descriptive here in the manufacturer's installation instructions. And lucky, they give us cute little diagrams. So here's our acceptable position within 12 inches of the ceiling and within outside of the four inch here. Again, they call this the dead air space. Uh, you want to be outside the four inches and outside the four inches here, but definitely within 12. So kind of straightforward. And then they say if you have a tray ceiling, a coffered ceiling, whatever you want to call Again, they show the zone where you have to be, and this one they call centimeters, but I'll tell you that's 30.5 centimeters, which is about 12 inches. So if you were to measure down that slope, it's about 12 inches, again, from the high point, which kind of lines up with this diagram, if you think about it, 12 inches from the high point. 
So that's where the smoke would gather. That's where they want it. So pretty straightforward. Now they'd go on, put smoke alarms <clears throat> at both ends of a bedroom hallway or large room. If the hallway or room is what? More than 30 feet long. So remember the code book says in the immediate vicinity of the bedrooms you shall have out in the hall. But here a manufacturer is saying, hey, if you got a really long hall, you, need, you might need two of them. Or if you've got a really big room, you might need to. So that's what they're talking about here in their installation instructions. And again, here's another good one. Smoke alarms on sloped, what I call cathedral ceilings. If you've got a big cathedral ceiling, they say, hey, within three feet of the highest point measured horizontally. And I'll show you that. It's right here. You go, what, what do they mean? Here. So here's our cathedral ceiling. And they're just saying, hey, within three feet of that peak, I will have a smoke detector, smoke alarm. It won't be within that four inches up there toward the peak. And then anywhere in this area, within three feet of the center, it shall be. So when you're looking up at a cathedral ceiling, try and get it up. You know, are you going to be able to measure exactly three feet? Probably not, but you'll have a good idea. Did they get it in the right place? If it's halfway down that ceiling, you know they're not in the right spot. If they put it way up here in the corner, you know it's not in the right spot. And then they do go into, you know, if you have a slope ceiling, again, within three feet of that slope ceiling, there you go, not within the four inch zone. So very descriptive within that little pamphlet that comes in every box with every smoke detector. Now, they also have at the very end of that instruction, where don't you put these things? Now, what I find kind of humorous is I'll have municipalities say, I require a smoke detector in the garage. I require a smoke detector in the attic. I'm in Texas. Have you ever been in a Texas attic in August? It's crazy hot up there. And guess what? The manufacturers don't want them in these places. Why? Here we go. Don't put these things, they're saying, in the garage. Products of combustion are there in a garage when you start up the car. You have a carbon monoxide smoke combo out there. It's going to go off every time the car goes in there. So don't want that. Um, normal cooking may cause nuisance alarms. Kitchens, if desired, use a photoelectric type. So they're telling us right here. Remember the ionization photoelectric discussion I had earlier? They're telling us, hey, Use photoelectric near a kitchen. Don't want to have anything other than that. And then do not install within six feet of any heating or cooking appliance. So they're giving you a, you know, not, nothing within six feet. Now, we talked about this less than four inches from a peak of an A-frame ceiling, the cathedral ceiling that I showed you the diagram on, they put in here. Now, here's, here's where it gets fun. In the area where the temperature may fall below 40 degrees or rise over 100 degrees Fahrenheit, such as garages, yes, and unfinished attics, yes. But again, municipalities make their own rules. Yeah, bring this to their attention. Manufacturers don't want these in those places if that applies to your area. Industry areas may cause nuisance alarms. Um, I don't know, maybe you got a wood shop. Uh, who knows? But lots of dust filters up into that sensor, goes off, and away we go. So very humid areas. Uh, even hum humidity, moisture, they're saying, hey, this can cause nuisance trips, and we don't want that. Uh, if you have a lot of bugs, they say, don't do that either. So um, now here's some of the things that you don't think about. Smoke alarms should, should not be installed, again, from the manufacturer, within three feet of a door to a bathroom containing tub or shower. That was in the code saying, hey, steam from that could cause bad things to happen. But then they go on. Or bathroom containing tub or shower, forced air supply ducts used for heating or cooling, ceiling or whole house ventilating fans, or other high flow areas, airflow. So where you have a ceiling fan, you don't want to be within three feet of that. You don't want to be within three feet of an air register up in your ceiling. Yes, you folks down up north, you have registers down in your floor. I'm in the south, we have all our registers up in the ceiling. That's how it is around here. So look for things like that. Here's one I didn't know. Fluorescent lights can do weird stuff to your smoke detector. You don't want it uh, close to those things. Do not install near vents, flues, chimneys, or forced air. I talked kind of about that, the near fans. Um, 
near fans, doors, windows, or others that expose to the weather. Don't put it above your front or back door. That would be silly because things blow in and out and you don't want that going off. So as we wind up this discussion, I just wanted to use a typical example. I'll say this is my bedroom or this is a room. This is my door down here and you know, out into the hall, who knows? But the manufacturer says, hey, you know, we recommend that you put this detector right in the middle of the ceiling. That's perfect. Well, we've got something else that usually goes in the middle of the ceiling. It's called a light or a ceiling fan. That's my opinion. And so then I'll probably, as a builder, I transfer the smoke alarm over to the door area. Again, doesn't matter. Four inches away from the wall, this or that. Follow all the rules. But then I've got more stuff in my ceiling, like a supply air duct. Register. So now it's too close to this thing. I'm blowing air on it. I can't do that. So now I've got to maybe move the smoke alarm over here, maybe, but not within three feet of that thing blowing air. That's what they said. But then in a good, good house with good ventilation, I've got a supply and I've got a return in my bedroom. And so supply is forced air. Whoosh. It's whooshing air out. And the return air is not as high velocity. You could be close to that because again, it's not forced air. It's just an ambient air going back into it. So that's probably more allowed. Now, some jurisdictions, again, check with your local jurisdiction. They may say, we don't want it within three feet of any register in a ceiling, supply or return. I'm just kind of giving you my interpretation. So double check to make sure, is this okay if your smoke detector is within three feet of a return? So we know supplies are, no, returns, uh, depends on the jurisdiction. As we wind this up, so now I stick a ceiling fan in here and remember the manufacturer said, hey, within three feet of the outside of this blade, I don't want that smoke detector because that could churn up air and dust and we don't want that. Um, so look for your three foot rule on that. And then what if, well shoot, what if this fan is inside a tray ceiling and you don't have three feet between here and there. Well, again, now you're into the area of what is the, the you got to find a, a common point. Uh, the manufacturer says, hey, I don't want it within three feet of the outside of this blade. So maybe you put it on the lower part of the coffered ceiling. What if this coffered ceiling, what if this ceiling is 18 inches up compared to this ceiling out here? I got an 18 inch difference. Well, again, Talk to your local jurisdiction. Maybe they'll say, hey, I don't care. I want it in the highest point. You may have to put it up in the tray. The manufacturer is saying, we prefer, you know, put it right here because it's within three feet of this blade. But again, jurisdictions rule. So double check. Me, I would probably put it on the lower one here and leave the air free to fly up there. It's an 18 inch or 12 inch tray. You, you might have that. But check with your local jurisdiction about tight ceilings in a tray situation with a ceiling fan up in there and where that thing can go. So yeah, if you got this, I saw this in a house, there's the ceiling fan. This detector was literally above the blade as it swung around. So that's an easy call if you're an inspector, that ain't gonna fly. So look for that at rough before you sheetrock that house. But uh, the location of those is becoming harder to dictate between ceiling fans supplies, returns, bathrooms, all sorts of things that could come into play with a smoke detector. That's really about it. I said this is a really important subject. Smoke alarms, carbon monoxide, everybody, again, a safety device that literally could save your life or your family's life. Make sure we put them in right. I hope you learned a little bit. And uh, again, it's a subject that I didn't know all this stuff till I read the stuff. So whoever you're using, look at their installation instructions, make sure you're doing it right. And uh, I hope you have happy building ahead and we'll see you on the next video. So long everybody.